We're not people searching for danger or a kick. That's not what we do. It's searching the way. Where is it going? There is a passage and go somewhere. Well, we need to find out where. The peninsula of Yucatan is the last frontier on Earth, I think, where you can do exploring. There is caves, water-filled caves, where we dive into that and the deep sea that are the last places where you can do real exploration. My name is Robert Schmidtner. I'm originally from Germany and I'm living in a peninsula of Yucatan since 17 years now. To make my living, I run my own dive shop. But whenever I have time to, I'm gonna go out in the jungle and find new cenotes and go cave exploring. When I came here, there was about three to four hundred kilometers of cave known at that time. Seeing all these nice caves, I thought, oh, maybe I can also explore a place where I, nobody had been before me. Well, I started that and now a couple of hundred kilometers later, I'm trying to connect the three biggest underground rivers in the world, which are sitting right here in this area. We have the second biggest cave in the world, but no one cares about the second. It's always the biggest, the longest. Only that is what the media will see or look at, which is really sad, really stupid. But we will make the biggest cave and we will fight for protection for it too. This cenotes, which we use as entrances to the cave systems, they usually form by the water running through the limestone underneath. And at some point, the ceiling becomes very thin and it breaks in and forms a sinkhole. The Mayans looked at this cenotes like sacred entrances to the underworld, which is called Shibalba. To get down to Shibalba, you only be able to get in there going through these portals into the Mayan underworld. Wow, wow, wow. Monkey business. I go diving now, okay? During exploration, you're totally concentrated in what you're doing. It's you trying to find the cave, trying to find a way. You don't have to care about anyone else.
it would be safe to say that Robbie's, in fact, one of the most prolific explorers of all time in Mexico. It's real. <laughs> My name is Bill Phillips. I'm a cave diving explorer and instructor living in Tulum, Mexico. Phillips, some, some line. So I'm a director in the Quintana Roo Speleological Society along with Jim Koch, and we archive all the exploration efforts and surveys. And then as you come up further north, this is the start of, of Sistema Sakaktun. Basically, we have a strip of land from Cancun to south of Tulum where all these caves are formed. Almost two-thirds of the world's discovered water-filled caves are in this little strip of land that's 10 kilometers by 100 kilometers big. I mean, that's just crazy. And we're building on top of it. Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Tulum is built on top of it. And when you build on top of something, things start to seep through the porous ground and enter the aquifer. So the concern, of course, is the impact. It's one of the fastest growing developments in the world. All this contamination seeps through the stone and pollutes the whole aquifer similar to like veins in your body. It will be carried all over the body, and in this case here, it will end up in the ocean. It's very important to save these places and make sure they don't get destroyed or get polluted before we're able to answer some questions, and there's a lot of questions. By diving into the system, searching my way, I do install the guideline, which is my lifeline back to the entrance, which might be hours away. I need to see where the cave goes, and I use the same guideline for measurements to see where I actually went, and if I maybe did get closer to that connection I wanted to do of the two different caves. There's three measurements I have to do. One is the distance from one fixed point to the next one. To measure that, we had to be inventive. Every 10 foot, we have another knot. We can count these knots, one, two, three, four knots, and I know we've got a 40 foot distance from one measure point to the next one. The other two measurements I need is the ankle of the line, where does it go? And we need to measure also water depths these three measurements I feed into the computer later and that shows us where the cave runs to or makes us a little stick map. Most important piece of the diving exploration is the pee valve. Dive will be good if you can pee all the hours long. My name is Torsten Torivelde. Robbie is an is a old friend of mine and I met him in the end of the 90s. We take some stuff very serious, but as well on the other hand, we enjoy as much as possible. <laughs> he is, I would say, one of the leading explorers in this area. He has tremendous knowledge behind the systems here. There are question mark areas where nobody been before. Yeah. Water right there. Oh, great. Let's check that one with the mask and when yeah. we come back out. But let's go first to the other one. When I spend time out in the jungle, I'm, I'm being like a boy. I smile all the time, I run through the bushes and we search and all this and we have a lot of fun, you know, and that's as well a, a big part of the exploration here. So this is how it looks like. That's a, definitely a proper cenote. So I will jump direct from here, just under me the case starts, and then I will disappear for a while and enjoy myself for sure. <laughs>
I found a little bit kind of a small cave. So I just went deeper in and in one moment, just around the corner, it was just like, boom, mind blowing. my light shining direct to an uh, ancient Mayan pot. Unbroken, untouched, absolutely stunning. It was just like thinking in my heart how maybe the people live there, maybe the water level was lower down, maybe they swim inside and I put the pots there. I just imagination how it could look like. To find a pot that pristine is actually very rare. It's about 1,500 feet inside the cave. How did it get there? We are on a race with science and growth of tourism and contamination. It's not difficult to see that our planet is a finite thing that can be destroyed. We're seeing the impact, and the impact is cumulative. In this area, with all these different cenotes and the complexity of these caves, it's a mecca for cave exploring. We found classic Mayan finds from 1,500 to 2,000 years back. Also bones from Ice Age. And it's like opening so many questions. That's where archaeologists can give us more information and find out more at the time when we press on and try to find more cave. I would like to say at one point, we made the biggest cave in the world. There's people that live here and don't even know what's down there. This is sacred. We don't have the right to destroy. We actually have the obligation to protect. When we came up, there was not enough oxygen in there. You can imagine searching a way where nobody else had been before, not knowing what we face. 